Hey everyone, it's John here from Hot Take Hockey, back with another video here, and we got Evan Rowell, uh, he covers the Colorado Avalanche for Colorado Hockey Now, Editor-in-Chief, and I'm very thankful to have him on here for the show, uh, just talking some avs, going into the new 2023-2024 NHL season. Uh, Evan, thank you so much for taking the time. Uh, just give me your overall sense right now. I mean, I know we were just talking off air, but long summer, finally hockey being back. Uh, how are you feeling going into the new season and just uh, being able to cover the new season for the Avs? Yeah, I mean, I think I, I feel pretty good, especially with the move the Avs made last week. I think they're in a much better spot. Um, I think that, you know, no one wants to go out in the first round, but yeah. they had a really short summer last year for good reasons. Obviously, they won the cup, but they were just banged up from the cup, winning the cup and just never got healthy during the year. So I think the long summer is going to be good for them, but um, yeah, we feel pretty good about them, especially in a weak central. I think the central is, you know, it's pretty much just two teams at the top and the abs are one of them. Yeah. The two teams I look at really for what you just said is Colorado and Tampa because Tampa in a similar sense would go, went on all those runs and finally they got out of the first round and had a longer summer. So I think Colorado is kind of in the same boat. Uh, I, I want to start with no Gabriel Landeskog for the year and, and kind of what you talked about the move they just made. So bringing in guys like Ross Colton, Miles Wood, Thomas Tatar, uh, go down the list. How do you feel they filled in the gaps? And I guess just in your perspective, being around the team, uh, being at practices, uh, what's kind of going to, like, obviously, I, I'd imagine Landis Scott will be around the team, but how do you feel going into the year without a captain? Yeah, I mean, at least this year they know they're not going to have him. Last yeah. year was kind of like, well, he's going to come back maybe, and then it just kept getting pushed down the line. So this year they know they're not going to have him. Uh, I mean, the reality is they were not going to replace him. Like it wasn't a good free agent market. They didn't have a ton of yeah. trade assets to move around. So they just were not going to be able to move or I guess replace him one for one. So instead what they did is they said, well, we had no depth last year after McKinnon and Renton and it was pretty weak. So they went the route of just trying to, you know, take some chances on some guys and build the depth around the team and the stars. So um, you can't replace Landy one for one, but I think they did a pretty good job of rebuilding the forward core. Um, I think at least half of the forward core is going to be different, which is a huge change. Um, and kind of what's exciting about this season is that it's going to look a lot different. Yeah, for sure. I think the the depth looks good. And I think they have some guys they brought in with a little bit of edge. I mean, specifically, I think Miles Wood's going to bring that. I think Ross Colton has the playoff experience with Tampa. Uh, just specifically on Ross Colton, because I, uh, I saw some of his quotes from today. Uh, do you feel he's that natural center, that third line spot uh, after Ryan Johansson? Or where do you see him slotting in? Yeah, I think the Avs have been talking all along that he's a center, um, and he's kind of moved around in Tampa Bay because they just have so many centers. Yep. But he thinks he's a natural center. Um, I watched him play a good bit of wing and a good bit of center, and he can do both. So I think it's he's going to start at center, and then they can kind of move around from there. Um, they have a lot of you know ability to change things in the top nine where they can move guys around. I think he's a guy Jared Bednar is really going to like just because he plays with a lot of edge. Um, he's going to kind of become that. Um, I guess, Mr. Everything that JT Comfer was for the team before yep. he left in free agency. So they kind of need to replace that. But um, yeah, I think he's he's going to be a fine addition to the team and um, he's going to get a bigger role than he had in Tampa where he wasn't really playing that much. Yeah, for sure. I think he's going to get an opportunity. And yeah, as I said, maybe he gets uh, an opportunity higher in the lineup. Uh, a guy didn't mention Jonathan Duran reuniting with his uh, former junior teammate. Uh, how do you feel that wor like working out? Do you think it's kind of a, a default to just have him next to Nate to start the season or where do you see that kind of going? I, I imagine he's going to start there, but he's going to have to earn it. Um, he's going to have to earn it with his play. Um, that's one where we're just going to have to see how it goes because, you know, Duran has holes in his game. Like you can't, you can't ignore them, but when he's healthy, he's been a pretty productive player and you put him next to Nathan McKinnon. Um, you put any player next to Nathan McKinnon, they're going to probably look good and produce points. So um, he's been in town for about three weeks now. He's been working with the team. Him and McKinnon are working after these captain skates every day, uh, just on little things. So you can kind of see the chemistry coming back. So I think he's, you know, he's going to have to earn that spot, but I would imagine he starts there because the Avs, you know, management made, made it a point to say that we talked to McKinnon when we were signing this guy and he gave us the heads up that, you know, this is what he's good at. This is what he's not good at. So um, they know why he's here. They know that McKinnon's a pretty big reason why. And I imagine he starts there and we'll see if he keeps the job. Yeah, he definitely, I think the consistency is huge with him as well. And yeah, we'll see if it works out with him in the top six, uh, just from you being around the skates and up to this point so far, is there anything out there for maybe people that, 
going into the season don't know like a player that you think's under the radar from what you've noticed so far, or maybe just a scenario that maybe a lot of people aren't talking about for the Avs in terms of a roster spot or a guy just to kind of keep an eye on, I guess. Well, I mean, the one thing I would say just being around the skates is that the team looks re-energized. Like th- coming back from the long or the short summer last year with the long season with the cup, yeah. they were beat down in camp and it was just, it, there wasn't a lot of energy around the team. Um, it's hard to get up for 82 games after you've won the cup, yeah. but they look re-energized in these skates. And there's really, after the Tatar signing, there's not like a ton of room for a young guy to come in and make a move uh, in the lineup. But if I was to say anyone, I would say Colton. I think he's going to have a big year and the Avs going to fall in love with him. And the, the other thing I would say is you watch these captain skates and you just see how talented Miko Rantanen is. And I, I don't know if he's going to hit 55 goals again, but it wouldn't surprise me if he does it again. I think he's just that good. And I don't know how well around the world or around the country and around the NHL he's, you know, how highly he's regarded, but he's a very special player in my opinion. Do you believe that the core of McKinnon, Rant, and McCarr, do you think these guys, whether it's plug away or bringing Landeskog back long-term, uh, do you think this is a team that, as we see the next five, six years, do you think they have a couple more cups in them? I do. I think it's it's going to be interesting kind of beyond this season how they handle things because Devon Taves is going to be a free agent next summer. Um, they've, they've had talks with him, but they, it doesn't sound like they've really gotten deep into anything and – if, if they do lose him in free agency, that's a big blow because that's a top pairing defenseman and you're not just going to go out and replace those guys very easily. But the core of the team, I mean, it's hard to find a better core than Kale McCarr, Nathan McKinnon, and Miko Rantanen, um, especially when McCarr's on this sweetheart deal. Um, I know McKinnon's getting paid a ton of money now and Rantanen's up close to $10 million, but McCarr is the best defenseman in the world and he's not getting paid like it. So you got to take advantage of that. So I just think this core is too talented. They're going to be in it for a long time. Um, it's just going to be a matter of, can they find the right pieces in the salary cap world to build around those guys? Yeah. You mentioned Devon Tabes. And I think when you look at the scenario of a guy like Bowen Byram, and I think, well, even mentioning Rantanen, who's two years away from a, a new contract, but specifically on the defense side, Byram's, I believe a couple of years away from needing the new contract. And then obviously Devon Taves is one year away. How do you see that going long-term? Because I think the Avs will stick with the solid defense. I think if you look at the defense core, they probably have one of the best, if not the best in the central division. So I think when you look at the Avs defense core, if they were to lose Devon Taves, one, are you confident in a Byram, McCarr, Gerard, and Manson long-term? And two, do you think they could go for, with that money, maybe they're losing with Devon Taves, a big forward maybe next off season. Like I'll just throw this out there just to cause the speculation. Jeff Merrick on 32 thoughts mentioned, maybe the Avs would be interested in a William Nylander. Like for example, do you see the Avs maybe turning that and going, okay, we could have a solid top four here long-term. Let's go for a big forward next off season. Um, I could see that. The only other thing I would say is that the Avs know that this is a team that's built through their defense joining the rush. Yeah. So I think they really do believe that the the defense is kind of where everything goes. So if they were going to go out and find anyone, I actually think a guy like Noah Hannafin is maybe somebody they would target who a little younger than Devon Taves, but can kind of do some of those same things. But I think they would prefer to keep that defense built the way it is because they know that's how they, they, they play so run and gun is they got the defense joining all the time. Do you think they believe Byram's that number one guy with McCarr, though, long-term? It's up to Byram to just show that he can stay healthy. That's really the only thing there is, because when he's healthy, he's a good defenseman. He was on pace for 20 goals over a full season last year. So if he can stay healthy this year, you feel a little bit better about Devontae's potentially walking in free agency. Um, Not great, because he's such a good defenseman, but you feel better knowing that you have Bone Byram there. Yeah, no, it makes sense. And I mean, I've noticed that with the Avs, and I think if they can get, as I said, if, if that depth can roll for them throughout the season and into the playoffs, I mean, I, I think that defense, as long as they stay healthy, is a, is a sure thing in my eyes. But uh, we're making our way down the lineup, Evan, going to goaltending. I saw your tweet today. Uh, obviously, you've got Georgiev. I think with Francois, talk about health. That's obviously been the conversation and how many starts he's getting in. But Georgiev looked great. After that, where do you see the direction here? Because, yeah, Trade assets, that conversation. Could they look at the waiver wire? I mean, just out loud, I think of trade at, or trade targets for the Avs. Maybe they look at Montreal. They've got three goalies. Or Calgary's got three goalies. Uh, Buffalo's got three potential goalies. Maybe they look at an Eric Comrie. Do you see it as maybe a trade for an insurance goalie or a, a potential backup? 
or could it be a waiver wire? Like the Leafs just signed Martin Jones. Maybe he falls into waivers. He got a lot of, a lot of starts in Seattle. Like where do you see the goaltending conversation if it gets a training camp and they need a guy? I think it, if it comes to it, I think they would, they, they would don't want to spend a ton of money here or a ton of assets. So I think it would be waiver wire would be the make, make the most sense. Like Casey DeSmith would be a fine backup, but 1.8 million for a guy that you're, you know, you're just hoping to play 20 yeah. games or something like this at this point for Georgiev to back him up. Um, I don't think that's great value. So I think you kind of wait on the waiver wire, see if anyone comes up. Cause a lot of teams just have goalies and they're going to have to send somebody through. So, um, and, and the hope is that Frankie, um, Pablo Francois is, is going to be healthy at some point. Now, I don't know if you should depend on that because last year he kind of struggled. He couldn't stay healthy at any point, but that's the hope. So you're, you're trying to get kind of a cheap replacement here. that can kind of, I guess, bide some time while Frankie gets healthy. Yeah. And I, I think that's the big thing because I mean, I look at Georgiev. I mean, I even have confidence looking from the outside that based on what we saw last year, he could play 55, 60 games. And, and be good that way. I, I think you probably just need a guy, like you said, like to play the 15, 20 remaining games um, and at least give you 500 hockey in those 20 games. And then outside of that, hopefully Gorgiev takes the reins. Yeah. And he, he far exceeded my expectations last season because when the Avs traded for him, you just don't know what you're going to get. Yeah. Um, and a lot of the credit does go to the Avs system and their defense. They just, Big time. they make a lot of goalies look good. They've done it over the last few years. Uh, but being around Georgiev and talking to him and just seeing him up close, he, he has that makeup of a starting goaltender. He's mentally, mentally strong. He's very athletic. So um, I, I think the team is, especially after last season, really confident that he can kind of hold things down until Frankie gets healthy. Yep. Uh, yeah. I think the, de- the defense is the biggest conversation. I'll, I'll continue to kind of beat that drum for the abs. Uh, yeah. Overall, Evan, just to kind of close this chat out, uh, how do you see the central division kind of playing out? Do you think Colorado's got a good shot to be up there? And maybe just in a general sense, who are a couple teams you see up there battling with the Avs if they're up there and maybe a couple teams that uh, you're lower on going into the season? Yeah, I mean, I really think it just comes down to the Avs and Dallas in the central. Um, I don't think it's a very good division, um, especially when you have Winnipeg, who's got so many things up in the air with Hellebuck and Shifley. Um, right now, they look decent, but who knows how they look in a couple months, but for the top of the division, I think it's comes down to the Avs and Dallas. Um, I actually had Dallas winning the division just barely um, up until the Avs signed Tatar. I think he, he does kind of swing things a little bit in the Avs favor. Um, the one thing that happened last year is the Avs still won the division, despite no one being healthy. Like they had so many main yeah. games, lost injury, whereas Dallas was completely healthy. So, you know, I think it's going to come down to those two. I'll still say Dallas takes it, but um, at the end of the season, you, I mean, the Avs don't care. As, as long as they're healthy yeah, going matter. into the playoffs, they're going to feel good. And I think the team below them is Minnesota, but I think they're a step below uh, Dallas and uh, Colorado. And then after that, I don't see another team in the Central um, making the playoffs. I think the other team playoff teams come from the Pacific. Um, I think Arizona is going to be fun to watch, at least. Um, they've made some moves that kind of make sense to me, and I think they're going to score some goals. I just... I don't think they're going to have the defense to kind of sneak into the playoffs, but I think they, they're kind of, they'd kind of be my surprise team in the central if anyone. Yeah. And I think there's fun storylines. I mean, obviously Connor Bedard's now in the division and yeah, as you said, I agree. Arizona is going to be a lot of fun. I think Nashville weirdly is always in the conversation and they added like playoff veterans too. So that's going to be interesting there. And then, yeah, as you said, I think Minnesota, even though I think they've got some clear holes, uh, I think in recent memory, they've shown they're going to be right there. So uh, I'm with you. I, I don't know if I want to count the Blues. I know I, I know that last year didn't go so great, and I think that the goaltending is a huge question mark there. But, yeah, I, the Central Division is actually the weird one for me going into the season. Yeah, I'm not I'm not super high on the Blues because I don't think Bennington – one, I think Bennington's very good, but I think that defense is not very good as well. I think yeah. they can score goals, but – that's the thing you get, get to the central division. It's pretty flawed past those top three teams. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, I mean, I'm with you, Evan. I, I think not just cause you're on, I think Colorado has got a good shot. I think to me, they're easily a top five contender uh, just based on the fact that they won. I think based on how much depth they added here, I think is huge. I think some people question the Ross Colton cap hit, uh, but I think between you and I here, I think, what he did in Tampa, the playoff experience. And I think he just fits that role really nicely, especially if he's that third line center. I think we've seen time and time again, having the three centers uh, for a matchup game in the playoffs is huge. 
So the fact that Colorado brought in some size with Ryan Johansson combined with some speed and some edge, maybe uh, with Ross Colton as the three C I think could be huge for Colorado, but is there anything else that maybe we didn't really cover today um, that you want to look forward to for the Avs? Well, I, I would say we didn't really touch Johansson. I, I have less concerns yeah. about Colton being the three C than I do about Johansson being the two C. Oh, okay. Um, it'll be interesting to see how he fits in Colorado because they like to play with tempo. He's not the fastest skater. Um, he has been here for about a month and a half, so he's getting used to everything. But I just think it's going to be interesting to watch. And it's going to be, you know, do the Avs pro scouting staff, did they do it again, getting a good player on cheap? We'll see. Do you think he's probably joined by Natushkin and Lekkonen? I think he'll be joined by Lekkonen and Rettinen. I think they'll kind of okay. spread things out. Gotcha. And then Natushkin's probably top line with Nate. Yeah, Natushkin, you put Natushkin up there to give size. Yeah, that, that makes sense. And then, yeah, I mean, I guess at that point, then you've got a pretty edgy third line with Ross Colton, Miles Wood, and uh, Tatar. And then you've got a lot of options for fourth line. So, I mean, Evan, just playing it out right there. That's a pretty good top nine. Yeah, and if Drin, you know, if it doesn't work out, that's why you have Tatar. That's what makes that move so smart. Yep. No, big time. Uh, I definitely agree. Uh, Evan, just on the way out here, please give yourself a huge shout. Anything you got coming up, whether it's a couple articles or projects or just day-to-day -day what you're up to, uh, please let the viewers know. Yeah, I mean, I just I run ColoradoHockeyNow.com. Um, season's going to get started here. We're going to have a lot of content every day, mostly written. We'll have some videos up. But, yeah, just excited to get the season going. And check us out at ColoradoHockeyNow.com because we're going to have everything as related. Let's go. All right, Evan, thank you so much for coming on. And everyone, look out for his Avs content, uh, our articles, writing, all that good stuff. And, uh, yeah, go check out his site. And we'll look out for the Avs going into the season. Thanks, Evan. Perfect. Thanks.